Hey there, guys, and welcome back to another episode of ProBono.org's podcast, Let's Talk Law. I'm your host, Emil, and today we've got quite an exciting topic to talk about that affects majority of people everywhere. A little about Non Kugeleko, she, she is an admitted attorney who began her career as an intern at Lawyers Against Abuse, or LVA. After completing her law studies at Rose University, she later joined MNS Attorney as a candidate attorney and later as an associate specializing in commercial litigation, com- construction law, and family law. In 2022, she returned to Lawyers Against Abuse as a legal officer providing free legal services to victims of gender-based violence. She is currently completing her LLM in human rights law. Nuku Leko is passionate about human rights law and ensuring legal services are accessible to vulnerable and marginalized members of society. Her areas of professional interest are in sexual and reproductive rights of young women, legal research, and family law related issues. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, it's a Friday. I'm happy. I will say, what I've noticed with a lot of you guys from probono.org, the bio, bios you guys have, it's quite a lot. It's not just going from probono, studying and then going immediately to probono.org. No. It's quite a big thing, and it's great to always see that, especially with lawyers. Yeah. But let's get straight into it, because a lot I want to know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot the audience also wants to know as well. So what specific areas of family law does probono.org assist with? Um, so I think it's just important to preface what family law is. Um, and it's a body of law that regulates family relationships. So divorce, um, matters relating to the protection of children, marriages, um, and domestic violence. So those are the areas that we deal with specifically at Pogona.org. Um, In relation to children's matters, that's dealt with by a different department, but it's still dealt with in pro bono. Um, so we deal specifically with divorces, so anything related to a divorce, anything related to registering of marriages, so anti-nuptial contracts or drafting settlement agreements, and then we also deal with domestic violence. And what are the most challenging matters to deal with family law? Because I can imagine there's quite a bit, especially if there's a divorce, there's mom's side and there's yeah. dad's side. And there's also the thing about the child or children as well. Yes. Um, so it's quite challenging in the sense that it affects someone's most intimate aspect of their life, right? So you're dealing with something that's quite personal and private to the person. Uh, I'm, I've found the matters I struggle with the most, or we struggle with the most in the office, is domestic violence, particularly because they're urgent to affect someone's safety and their well-being. Um, the other challenge we're seeing in the office is uh, divorce via substituted service. So that means divorcing someone who you aren't able to locate. So divorce someone you can't you are unable to locate to or you can't locate them. So you don't know oh. who they are. Yeah. Oh, but okay. you want to divorce them. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. So it's like you've separated and you you don't know where they are at all. So for example, if I had a wife and I divorced her and I just well, I didn't divorce her yet, I just disappear on the face of the earth. Yes. That would that's that when that It'd be that, that come coming. Oh, okay. Wow, interesting. I didn't know those different divorces. Yeah. Now, what are some of the important steps people usually miss that create legal problems in the future? I can imagine there are quite some mistakes that people do make when it comes to, you know, filing a divorce yeah. or getting restraining order stuff as well within a family member. Yeah. Um, I think the issue is like with any issue, people don't do their research or they don't prepare. So for instance, people get married and they don't consider Uh, which marital regime they're going to choose. So um, community of property, are they going to get married out of community of property with a cruel people don't consider these things? And then they get divorced or someone passes away and they're surprised at the implications of that. Um, So I think lack of preparation and lack of research, not understanding why you're doing a certain thing. So not understanding before you get divorced, what are the steps that you need to take? Um, before you apply for a protection order, what are the steps that you need to take? And so getting legal advice in that instance is really important. And with that same question, does those, what are the mistakes also made when it comes to unregistered marriages? Like, are there similar mistakes over there as well, or is that part of the problem of them doing the research? It's part of the problem of not doing the research. So um, people don't consider the implications of a customary marriage, for instance. And so people get customarily married, they don't register the marriage, and then something happens. Either someone passes away, or someone wants to get married again to someone else, or people want to get a divorce, and they realize that their customary marriage isn't registered. Or people think that because they got customarily marriage, married, rather, it's not a valid marriage, and it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it goes back to preparation and research, not getting 
the advice that you need before you enter into something that's quite serious? So bearing in mind, South Africa has a, we don't have the best cases in the world for, I don't know how to easily say this, but where we have high numbers of domestic violence. And in South Africa as well, we also have massive, massive gender-based violence problem. So could you tell us the GBV project that Provoto.org champions? Yeah. Um, so it's a really important project that we are working on through Provoto.org. Um, so we run a GBV help desk or domestic violence help desk rather at various courts. So it's not just the Johannesburg office that's doing it. Cape Town and Durban are also running the same project. But the purpose of the project really is to ensure that um, victims of gender-based violence have access to legal services. And over and above having access to legal services, we are raising awareness in communities about what domestic violence is, what are the legal remedies, where can you go to get help. We are also trying to incentivize the attorneys on our panel to take up matters related to domestic violence. So that's the project and that's the work that we're trying to do. Essentially, we're trying to offer as much legal support as we can to victims and survivors of GPV. Before we end the interview, I just want to talk about the last question or previous question we just answered. It's with, in regards to GBV, do not, do other law firms also give the exact same service that you guys provide or are you guys unique in doing that? So we are unique in the sense that we operate as a clearinghouse. And so clients come to us and we're able to partner them with private attorneys, whereas other institutions or other NGOs rather, they're the ones who offer that legal support directly or they might refer those clients to pro bono.org. And finally, how do we get other legal practitioners to sign up and actually join the GVV project, you know, through pro bono.org or just join pro bono.org in general? So attorneys can um, go to our website and complete our sign up forms um, or contact our, our office in order to find out how to sign up. But we really do want to encourage attorneys to sign up to join the panel. And it doesn't mean by signing up that they only have to maybe work through our legal clinics. They can do community workshops. They can do webinars. There's a lot of ways that they can assist. Okay, so it's not just them doing a pro bono stuff for them. Yes. So it, it, it forms part of pro bono, but it's not necessarily just working with one client mm -hmm. one on one. You can find other ways. So we consider it a pro bono to do a community workshop or to advise other attorneys on matters related to family law or domestic violence um, and advising other attorneys. That's also pro bono work. Well, Nongu Guleko, thank you so much for joining us for today's episode and actually making it more easier for people like myself and people watching more, making it easier to understand what family law is. And actually also, I didn't know there was, multi, there was two different types of divorcing you can get. Which, I mean, it probably opened the mind to a lot of people and is a solution yeah. that's probably given to a lot of people now. Yeah. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this Proponent.org episode, check out the playlist as well. We have a whole playlist of all their stuff now. <laughs> um, but if you guys did enjoy it, please keep a look out for our next episode we're going to be doing. Um, but other than that, like I always say, share the video with your family, friends, and coworkers. Yes. And Kaleko, thank you again so much. Thank you very much.